Hey, Michael. Hey, how's it going? Happy yeah, Friday. not too bad. Happy Friday. Uh, be good to catch up with you later on today, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Very cool. And uh, wait for people to join and then hammer ruthlessly through this document that um, I know people have been going through. I've, I've had a couple of passes and I am yeah. spoiling myself ready for uh, another top to bottom review. It took me ages to get here, but Michael, I, I finally got halfway through your, your section today. <laughs> so uh, excuse the unfinished business, but um, I, I will get more done today as well. Finish that off. Yeah, I, I'll actually have uh, some time this weekend. Um, uh, so uh, I, I do a lot of volunteering. So I tutor a lot of folks in, in programming. So the past, they, they have a oh. big project coming up. So I haven't had a lot of time to focus on this thing, but uh, this weekend, um, that's over, so uh, should have more time to to, to go back cool. over. Well, I I don't do anything uh, quite so selfless, and it's taken me weeks to get here. So <laughs> you're doing better than I am. I'm open to suggestions here, but I, I was thinking of just going top to bottom, see how far we get as like a joint edit. Um, I, I know multiple people are then going to take separate sections, and, and I, for one, uh, am going to take another sort of run from top to bottom tonight, if not Saturday again. Any other suggestions for efficiency? I am going somewhat stir crazy at this point, reading the same document over and over again. <laughs> it's good stuff. There's some really good stuff in here. I'm just, uh, I'm. And, and I think, to be fair, it was a small victory for the uh, for the British with artifactory, artifactory. But yeah. Oh, you guys won that one. Clearly. I, I, I wanted <laughs> to be like, hey, what's the major tech company that the stores artifacts called? Is that RTE FA Factory? <laughs> That's right. I think the company's called JFrog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the tool. I'm sorry, Michael. I misspoke. Also, I always forget that that's the company name. It just does not connect to me. Very good. Very good. All right. Look, um, if unless people have another uh, approach for efficiency, I was going to suggest just going through like that and, uh, and reading and joint editing and, and closing out some of these comments. Completely open for other approaches. No. Nope. All right. Let's go. Um, so if you can open up the report, uh, what do we do? Uh, maybe go through and just look at a section at a time and then offer feedback, or we can update the text or pull in the different comments. So I guess if I look at executive summary, the comments for that. Oh, what's going on? Are there any comments actually in executive summary? I don't think so. Yeah, I can see everyone piling in. Anything specifically to change on that? I don't think there's any comments assigned to it. No, nope, I'm going to take that to move forward. Uh, open source tools and project map. I think that's a really cool idea. I'm just wondering about whether that's the right place to put it. It seems like something that would be at like a, an appendix or, you know, yep. on its own page, really. Thumbs up. I think it's a really cool idea. I'm going to copy that then and paste that to the bottom. I'll be back with you in a second. That's a long document now, right? Done. Okay, into the introduction. 
got a comment. Add in how we want the reader to use this paper. I have a question about the scope, actually. I think you may yep. have missed it. Um, so this paper is not covering container uh, funkiness, right? That's anyone, a, want, anyone want to go I through that? <laughs> yep. I, the container funkiness, I, I missed that day in college. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what do you mean, Nisha? Um, so the scope is general source code uh, practices versus container best practices. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think it's definitely not just containers, right? It's, uh, we, 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 can, we can solidly say it's not focused on containers, but I do think containers are a big part of it. And, and we do mention, I believe, in, in the actual document, how the the I think on the signing side specifically how that can apply to containers and and built deployed uh, artifacts. I think when we say artifacts, a lot of the times this group means containers. Okay. Um, the comment says container recommendations are very specific and could stand as an entire separate document. Where is this? This yep, Emily, container step. recommendations are very specific and can stand as an entire separate document defense as containers designed from trusted supply chains. I'm not convinced it would be a separate document because it's so intertwined in some of the things we're suggesting. Can we, can we maybe point out, just to, to help frame it, can we point out a few things that we're referring to when we're talking about container recommendations? Obviously, we've got the signing. Um, we've got multiple bits of scanning, but... Um, so... There is probably something we could add about um, the base images that are used in containers. Yep. Um, evaluating those, uh, we could add something about make files and build scripts that use containers as build stages. Uh, some stuff about multi-stage Docker builds or multi-stage builds in general. Yep. Uh, keeping track of those, um, I suppose signing is, I mean, the si signing the container image is what it is. It's the best we can do for now. Yeah. Um, and then um, probably some best practices around Docker files because uh, it seems, well, Best practices around, uh, you know, pulling using uh, a, a mutable tag versus pulling by digest uh, to uh, keep build re reproducibility yep. using. Yeah, so I am I am just pouring all of this yeah. out. So that's why I'm asking whether so, so, you want all of this in this document or a separate you know, document. Well, that's the thing. From, from my view, I, th I think it's, it's difficult because it is kind of intertwined, right? And the reality is we are the CNCF. Um, and, and I wonder if, if we, we sort of start to expand upon that and if we get to the point that, look, it kind of gets in the way of the general flow of content, maybe it is kind of an appendix or it's a reference to material that already exists, but at least we reference it inside the document. It, it, would that be an approach, right? That's largely I, what I did for my paper on my side is I, I mean, containers are kind of a part, part and parcel of the entire thing. It's pervasive throughout the entire supply chain because ultimately that's, in, in a lot of ways, that's your deliverable, right? And so you're acting upon that. And, and all of the points you made are, are absolutely spot on. I think they need to be mentioned, but there are other documents you can reference out to. So you don't have to explain, okay, well, let's talk about multi, uh, multi-stage multi builds and you know, here, here's some pros and cons. You know, we don't have to do all that. You can point to different things, but say, you definitely need to focus on that and make sure you have the most minimally smallest container you know, to give yourself the smallest security risk at the end, stuff like that. We can give those recommendations, but base it off of other documents and articles that already exist. Yeah, but I definitely think it should be a part of it. So the reason why I am advocating for writing out all of those recommendations specifically here is because the existing recommendations around building container images actually contradict 
all of the stuff that I've said over here, for example, you know, oh, use, uh, uh, use, you can, you can just pull from uh, an image from Docker Hub. Uh, you don't have to check the base image. That's, wow. that's not something that's not something that is recorded anywhere. I don't no. think. Um, I, so, so I, I think it makes sense to add this and, and I think there's a valid points as, as well. Right. And then we, we, but, but I, I guess my, my, my concern here is is on the the size of that scope in, increase in, in certain timelines, right? And and frankly, who's going to write that? So, but but I think I think it's an appropriate statement, right? So I think a way forward is, is there anyone on the call who actually wants to take that and and perhaps initially suggestion, but maybe write it as an appendix, and then if we're able to get to the point where it is a consolidated whole, maybe we can actually push it into that document. Or I can, someone to focus on it, I guess. Well, I, I can do that for you. I've written this for um, uh, VMware internally anyway. So it's just modifying it. I have added some uh, wording around hardening containers based upon, um, upon the Defa Department of Defense approaches. It's more focused on the abstract of taking scratch and adding stuff or distroless or the inverse just reducing or copying into a multi-stage docker file so it's it's there at a high level but there's no there's no detail on the actual docker file hardening steps um i'd be happy to add a few more bits to that if uh, if you want to just uh collaborate on that or uh, or i'll follow your lead or, or whichever i'm happy with that that's fine so, so Nisha and Andy, um, do you want to maybe on that comment add, add your names in there that you'd take that, and, and is it is it reasonable to add that initially as that appendix, and depending on the the speed and detail, we we can look to integrate that because I do think it makes a lot of sense to add it in. You know, it's just annoying that it's additional scope, but actually it's the right team, the right place to add it. It's the right scope to add. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does it uh, also make sense to maybe just uh, highlight the differences between, you know, um, uh, building because because I think that there's the there's the other concern with, um, for example, a build worker container like something that's going to be running your build is going to have a like increased set of concerns over just sort of yeah. normal, um, you know, if you're building like a random application or something like that. C yeah, completely. Now, now that that is, I, I, I don't recall whether it's actually in there, but that's what I was referring to last week when we were talking about, you know, having the pipeline to create those really hardened build containers for those workers. Um, and that, that absolutely has to be in the middle of the document, in my view, because um, there's a lot of, um, I can I can take that one. If um, it's maybe a sign, you know, I can have a shot at writing that part. Yeah, I, I briefly go over a little bit of that in my section, but not really like just saying like, hey, you should have a minimal build container, but not really explaining how you would then uh, do that. Great one. Yep. I'll, um, I don't know why to add that actually as a comment. I'll do that. So in the lifecycle management of that build is pretty important as well. So Nisha, can you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind joining you guys on that conversations for the hardening of the, or the, the better practices for uh, containers as well, please. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I've given a note for myself to add that appendix for container images. So we can uh, collaborate over that. Great. Okay. If we move on there, so, um, Mike, you have a comment on the introduction. Software supply and checks occur. I would soften the stance. Yeah, uh, basically the way I read that is like the only attacks are coming when it's from an outside entity. And so, and I think the, the side comments are probably pretty, pretty important. Like what exactly do we want to determine is the, uh, um, what, what is the supply chain? And I always consider a software and my own internal teams to be a part of that whole software supply chain. It's not just from outside, but I could write pretty poor software that exposes vulnerabilities pretty easily that have no dependencies on outside resources. 
Indeed. So that was all. I just I figured we could probably soften it up. I can provide what I what I would potentially write for it. It'd be just expanding lightly what it is and if you yep. like. I just I didn't know where my scope was just reviewing or helping contribute, so I just kind of left oh, the comments. Both. No, no. Okay. Both or everything. Okay. I would welcome your, your feedback and input into that. So if you want to I can I can I can uh, update it then. Yep. Yeah, I, I also very much agree with that. Uh, uh, at the previous place, uh, we definitely, that was one of our biggest concerns was we actually built the majority of our software in-house, but we were concerned about developers injecting stuff they weren't supposed to into our internal supply chain. Yep. Right. So moving on, um, uh, right, so a couple of just minor additions in here. So you, Alex suggests deleting supply chain security. It's a detailed catalog of supply chain. It kind of makes sense to me. Thumbs. Yep, done. Uh, add the supply chain, oh, supply chain effects. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, aggregated risk from so software supply chain compromises continue to grow. That was just a simplification of that sentence to make it uh, uh, flow a little bit better. So whatever you yep. want to do there. Got it. Uh, and you deleted the from uh, Atlantic Council? I just moved that into the footnote. Okay, cool. I like the ominous, the problem is not going away. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's a couple of ads and deletes from Alex. Do we want to quickly just look at them and agree on mass? Yeah, it makes sense to me, to be fair. There's a hum and a half from Richard. <laughs> I just made up a term there, but there's that. No. Like, Richard, you look humming like you're That's humming good... and hawing. Uh, the, for example, few architectures exist for implementing recommendations of secured software factories. If, is including that actually useful for the overall objective? And what if that changes? You know, I, I I think we should write stuff that is maybe I I don't know. It, it, it's this is nitpicky at this point. It's fine. This is still the introduction. People are going to skim right past this. I I do wonder if that I I mean I I do think open source often has a, a problem with identifying exactly what its scope or current level of maturity is. I I wonder if we put something like as of date X. This is not a well developed or it's a nascent. Something to that end. This is a nascent rather than sort of dating it, perhaps. Yeah, I think that that's that's actually not <laughs> terrible. We'll look back at this time. And we'll say, yeah, there was really nothing. Um, not bad what? idea. I have a high-level question about this. How far down the stack? Uh, are we going to provide recommendations for? Do we provide recommendations for IoT devices? Uh, I think it's sand and chipsets, right? So at this point, it looks like we have a lot of recommendations around the top level securing the source code. Yep. Um, do we... Do we put the onus on people to, you know, check all the way down to their firmware? Do they, would they really, I mean. Well, I, I guess if we, if we think about the, the, the sort of actors, we're looking at moderate security, whatever that means and high security. So if, if we were to say to someone, look, whatever that most moderate posture is, and we're gonna to have to make up what a moderate posture is, you know, what would be the reasonable assumption you were you know, doing a, that, that moderate level of a, a risk assessment. 
would you start looking at the firmware on a chip? Would you harden your operating system? Would you at least check the source code? And I guess that might be a way of trying to figure out where we'd stop. What do you think? If, if I was going to throw my hat in, I, I'd say that we uh, we have to define the the trust scope. I'm making that up, and uh, maybe shared responsibility is a good thing to fall back on. And we just say we expect the hardware is not backdoored or compromised when we're using it. I think that's a great point of stating that. Yeah. That's that's what I did in my paper is I, I literally I, I basically said that there's going to be a hardening process you're going to do in order to build your software and run your software like the scope of this paper doesn't include that. Um, I can say there's a few things that we can do like minor things we can do, but really it's picking up from the responsibilities of a developer uh, and a platform admin and then running that through the completion up to the point where it goes into a production at that point I'm pretty explicit on my side to say at that point there's tons of tools and techniques and things that are well defined outside of that range. It's just the scope of the developer and the platform. Uh, operators and we have and, and i think it's great right because we've got the assumptions section right so that's effectively where we'd state that right this is assumption of what's in and what's out um is, is the os part of this well i i, I think we'd state I think to Mike's point is that look the assumption is that you have hardened the os you have hardened, you you have we're not going to look at chipset backdooring and such. I, I, I think we make yeah. that up in the assumption. Yeah, it's the it's the shared responsibility model. You need to make some assumptions somewhere, and you know, and maybe that spawns another paper in the future that talks about how do you go further down to the hardware level, and you know, that's that part of the supply chain, you know, the physical supply chain. But uh, one paper is not going to, be able to handle all that, so. Just draw draw your lines in the sand and say this is where we make the assumption that at this point you you're working on this and then uh, the exit the same way like we we assume that you'll take responsibility from that point on here's the recommendations for that gap in between. But container OSs are in scope, right? Would that be the running it or the building of it? Both. So, because that that's kind of like, I, I looked at that as well and I kind of left it off my side of the paper because it, it introduced more scope that I wasn't, you know, that, that yeah, if you think about it from a developer's perspective, you don't have a lot of control over that. It's kind of what's there. And so I assumed that was, a, uh, or I made the assumption that that was the part of um, scope that was out um, just because of the, you know, it's, it's how much scope do you want to put in? And, uh, and it, you could make an uh, argument for both sides to say, yeah, it could totally be a part of it. You could also make, you know, an equal argument saying that who has the ability to make the decisions or changes uh, within that. And it's probably not necessarily the platform team, but maybe it's, you know, operations or something. So I, I just kind of, I, I left it out of mind um, for that reason, but we I could use the both sides too. So, <laughs> Yeah, we originally talked about having this paper provide kind of a roadmap for gaps in the open source ecosystem. So if that's still a goal of this white paper, then we should definitely include that. I think it's also worthwhile to, to make the distinction between, um, obviously some of it's gonna be like the hardening of your software factory and, and all the things that are sort of um, all the components of that, like your build systems, your CICD and whatnot, and the hardening of the OS and separate from, um, you know, building of uh, a, an end user sort of application uh, OS. I, I wonder if we would say that we are forced to trust a couple of vendors. One is the infrastructure provider or cloud provider. Another is probably the vendor that ships the operating or, or the Linux distribution that we're using under the hood. And so we say that we, we trust those not to be compromised, but then another vendor who might be shipping us binaries and it's just that one, my magic binary that does everything kind of thing. Um, we would trust that less and then model the build processes if that was already compromised and then decide on our controls based on that being exploited. That's, I think that's where my mind is. So, so I'm down in the assumption section. I sort of jumped down if people have 
following me in the document uh, and I've just put a, a brief summary of, of text in there that I think covers what we've been discussing under the shared responsibility section. Feel free to you know, comment. Um, paper doesn't detail recommendations to protect against hardware vulnerabilities, backdoors, nor does it detail operating system hardening. This will be part of the shared responsibility between developer, build team, infrastructure provider, and operating system provider. I'm not wedded to any of that text. It's just that I think there was a summary of pretty much where we went. I think we can also maybe state the assumption that, um, you know, your hardware is not backdoored, your operating system is not backdoored. We're just going on top of that, whatever. Yep, is, is that covered in that first sentence or would you suggest changing that somewhat? It I feel like that the first sentence doesn't include the operating system. I, I feel like it does, but it doesn't. Like it doesn't say that, you know, the operating system isn't backdoored. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Or backdoors. This does not protect depends backdoors in hardware or operating system. So that might be a good area also to link out for if you've got other areas that we can share links to, to say, if you're interested in, or you know, while it's outside the scope, go read these things because it's still important, um, but go read them here. This paper just doesn't cover them. Um. So you can, if you want, you can tag me on something like that and I'll go drum up a list of a few different ones that we can vet what's are most important to do, but I'm more than happy to do that work. Excellent, thank you. Alex, you had it in... Uh network provided you want to finish off that comment change i i think i i think i heard andy saying something about the cloud provider being one of the other things that we had to assume we trusted i was just trying to make sure we caught that before we moved is that under infrastructure or is that more specialized than that infrastructure cloud provider it, it's a funny one because i guess if we're if we're in the cloud then we trust that our shared data stores are not compromised, for example. If we're on-prem, that's probably slightly more in scope as somewhere that yep. something might persist. I wonder if we need to draw that distinction. Yep, just updated. Oop, delete part. Right, so if we, I think we missed a chunk. I appreciate we're still in the introduction at this point, but uh, da, 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 replace with any. Yep. Um, we've solved that, I believe. Where? Yep. Uh, da, 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 da. This paper is intended to provide the community with a best practice and reference. Yep. Right, so on to audience. Issues and audience. There's no comments there. Scope. Uh, so I've got a comment. Just I just hung it off goals. Yeah, it, it's just a 
sort of point of order really of how we actually structure our recommendations throughout the piece we should probably do that when we get a bit later on but um i went with the approach of one line explains a, a you know one line to explain what the recommendation was the insurance assurance category risk category and then the text of the justification The only thing um, I would say here, John, on this is um, along the lines of like, this should be, you know, in the abstract, it should be the very first thing somebody sees when they get into the paper, right? Like if I don't know in the first, that first paragraph, what this is going to do for me, I'm going to click X on the, the, win, the tab. Um, so I, the, I, if we're already putting it there, I would say, let's hope not to repeat ourselves. Uh, how, how do you, how do you mean, Richard? You, you mean like a legend to where to look for or a, a summary of each of the uh, recommendations no if there's a goals if there's an overall goals oh uh, i'm sorry right uh, section that that that's going to say what you're supposed to get out of reading this paper i would expect that to be you know the very first thing that you see when you open the paper one of the first probably two paragraphs it would be in an abstract if this was like a scientific paper right um which I don't, I don't know how we, if we're, we're planning on doing such a thing. So the reality is, is it the same as the executive, the executive summary? Just. I would say so. It's the goals are the first couple of sentences of that executive summary, hopefully. Is it actually? I don't think so. The executive summary kind of gives, sets a backdrop and maybe what, I would, I, I mean, I'd recommend the first, the, this goals section to be the first paragraph and then the backdrop for the everything else. Any other thoughts? My, I agree with that. I think my understanding is the executive summary is just a stub right now and that it's going to need to get rewritten after we're fairly happy about the rest of the content. So I think that'll probably get addressed once that happens, would be my guess. Right. Should we just make a comment there in the, in the executive summary to outline goals initially? And, and I'm curious, Mike Enzer, what, what you guys, whether that's something similar you all did in, in the Google paper. You mean writing the, uh, <clears throat> the executive summary late? Is that what you mean? No, the, the putting the goals right there in that executive summary. Um, yeah, they were uh, they were bullet points on ours, I believe, if I remember right. Okay. Yeah, so I don't I don't think I had a subsection of goals. It was just it was a part of that because it was like that's the statement. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to throw it up there at the top and then put a comment on it. That. Um... Oh, there you go. I think you just did. Uh, well, Alex did. Um... Yep. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. So we didn't know assumptions. We did the shared responsibility. Uh, also assumptions on software sources. This paper leverage is several. So I think these terms under software sources are all good. I would, it doesn't strike me though that we've really used them very much throughout the paper. Right. Um, so I wonder if that's something that we should go back through with an eye towards um, sort of having a common vocabulary that we're using throughout the rest of the paper. Um, if we're defining these terms up at the top. Also, do we need like a glossary at the back of the paper or is that over the top? I'd vote for back. This is a lot of words to read. I'm going to lose interest. Yeah.
I think John, you're talking on mute. I am. It was uh, absolute gold. <laughs> um, but what I meant was, um, I've uh, I've uh, added a added a glossary, and should we take the software sources sources and software groups and just put that at the back of the paper? Yeah. Great. Okay. they kind of also align a little bit with like a bit of a persona uh, in a glossary do you want to also define that because we don't have things like admin uh, or uh, um, uh, platform admins or, or you know, stuff like that that might be able to be used within the uh, like for ownership and responsibilities within the different phases of the life cycle yeah that's a good one actually we, um... so something that we have to do for all of our documents is writing out personas or using a persona so I think we touch on it a little, but not nowhere near enough. Um, assurance personas, but don't really go into that detail, right? Yeah, it makes sense. They don't have to be explicit if you don't want to. Just sometimes it's just figure it ask. I think it is good to make them explicit. Um, yeah, but I think it's yeah back matter material. Like don't yeah. make everyone read it. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort of personas should we have in there, right? So if you want to tag me, I can put the ones that we typically use on our side. It's it's abstracted, so it's not specific to any vendor of any type. It's just it's more just industry. But I can throw in a few of them. Yeah. You've got a couple already for like the the raw source. Like you've got a couple areas in there, so I'm more than happy to take that on. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. So it's right at the back of the paper. Okay. So assurance, personas, risk appetite. Uh, I think it's fairly light in commentary. Yeah, you'd see a bit of a, a typo. It says two security levels, low, moderate, high. I think we should either get rid of the low or call it three. Do we actually um, mention much about low in the rest of the paper? It's I mean, I don't really know that we should recommend low security ever, but <laughs> well, I don't know. Baseline, right? Sorry, Vinod? Baseline instead of low. But I think if we if we think through the actual, um, I think if well, maybe there are some recommendations, but I don't. I don't recall any that actually were only pertinent to low. What is baseline? Is that what everyone's using today, the <laughs> default, and therefore we don't need to document it? I'd say moderate and high meet, you know. What do we think? Three or moderate and high? Any thumbs for moderate and high? Yeah, moderate and high. About five, yep. Yeah. County. Uh, da, da, da. Low risk. Um, whereabouts did it say two? Is it in the risk environments or assurance? I can't see it now. Oh, got it. Do you want to change that, Josh? Joshua? Sure. Yeah. Cool. All right. So then we're all the way down into actually securing the supply chain. If I'm right in thinking that. So would footnote power grids from Andreas. Life sustainment systems may include resulting in power grids and water facilities. Uh, right, so on that commentary, existing research indicates 
And then there's comments from Russ Anderson and Andreas. Well, wow, it's quite a lengthy. Uh, what's a recommendation for change there, though? So I think it's basically stating that when it was rewritten, it fixed the issue. Um, so actually, is that comment uh, solved by the change in that paragraph, existing research indicates? Or is there a text that needs to be added there? Yeah, it's I think to me it's actually addressed in whoever rewrote that paragraph. Yep. Yep, okay. It resolved. Uh, is this a risk vector or exploit path or attack vector or target vector risk is the combination of exploit? Major. Oh, it's the, so what do we call that? Risk vector, attack vector, or vulnerability? What is the appropriate term in that context? Any thoughts? Risk vector, attack vector? Isn't an isn't attack vector more common? Like, yeah, I've always heard it as attack vector, but a uh, vector, but. Yeah. Or a threat vector could be the other. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I like threat. Vector. It just depends on softening, like how how yeah, how mitigated language you want to use for it. Like what doesn't sound as rough, but they're both largely equal. Attack vector makes it sound to me like we are suggesting that any closed source software that you're ingesting is automatically a, gonna gonna attack you. <laughs> yeah. Threat vectors. I, I use the word threat more often than attack. So, I'm trying to push people to open source. Maybe this is the way. Okay. Threat vector. Uh, diagram needs review to ensure we are not using copyrighted or trademark data. Very true. Um, we've got a reference to it, but uh, we should definitely follow up on that. Okay, I'll move on a little bit. Uh, Nisha, your comment. What's interesting? I've lost track of which comment. I'm sorry, We're, uh, we've managed to make it down to securing the software supply chain and there's the picture, the image, figure one. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was a suggestion. It seems that it was uh, uh, accepted. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the I think the explanation is fine. So we can um, we can resolve that. Yep. Okay. Done. Now it's general guidance. Alex is uh, right, verification. This is the heart of the software factory methodology. Yep. 
Is verification looking okay now? Yep. Are we doing metadata we do? with the dash? We're not Thank a dash. You, Marina. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that one more time, Marina. Does metadata have a dash? I, I don't think it matters. I just think we have to decide. <laughs> I've seen it elsewhere without the dash, but I don't know which is more common. Well, what's the English way of doing it? <laughs> Google ngram search. Um, I have absolutely no idea. The OED has it without a dash. Are we going without? I think it's more common. So the general guidelines looking okay. So uh, just mm. a small comment on the secure authentication part under general guidance, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I just need to, in the secure authentication section, I want that we put multi-factor auth first. And uh, when, when we generally talk about public key infrastructure, generally people tend to move towards certificates, right? And not SSH keys. Uh, so, um, so uh, let's just put it like, okay, multi-factor authentication A and then B should be like, okay, well, um, SSH keys and at C, uh, we then uh, discussed, uh, I don't know this big explicit limiting of an authentication mechanism to particular activities through app passwords or personal access tokens. I think we, we just need to uh, kind of give examples here, okay? Like establish multi-factor authentication, B SSH keys, C personal access tokens, or application app passwords. So something like that, right? I would actually say that probably all these options are like subsets of multi-factor um, authentication because they're all like factors you could use for your multiple factors? Uh, no, no, the, the, it, it doesn't uh, It doesn't fall under multi-factors. Uh, multi-factor has a very different definition uh, and uh, you have to basically, these fall into only one category, okay? When you explain multi-factor, there are different factors. Like, I mean, you can give thumbprint and there's a particular definition for multi-factor. They all doesn't fall into that. So. Yeah, but they're they're part of they're one of the, the factors, and maybe we can also include like fingerprints, biometrics, anything else that you can use to authenticate. I don't know. Yep. Okay. But I don't yeah. know if it matters too much. So, I I tend to agree with with Raina there. Like I think like they they are multiple factors, and and I agree. Like if we if we want to like be strict to the word, I think uh, I can't remember it off the top of my head right now, but it's like multi factor is like. A who you are, what you know, where, what, what you are. Like, there's, there's a de that definition, right? Yeah. And we can probably yeah. get a little more pedantic about it, but I do, I do agree that those are one of the components of, of a multi-factor. So, and also, aren't we explaining that further down somewhere? So we don't have to like this, this section right here doesn't have to be highly specific. It can be you will be reading about this, so we don't have to. At this moment, we don't have to define it yet. Yeah. So, so let's make it generic then, right? But, but as I said. Uh, um, it's fine, but uh, multi this all these examples that we have, it is only one factor of multi-factor. Okay, Th this is technically the how the things is. So if we are we are mentioning this thing at the other uh, sections like securing source code, so yeah, we can keep it generic and we just don't give examples here, right? 
but but yeah I, there are few terms uh, which are used uh, uh, which have particular meaning in the security community so let's uh, let's try to make sure that we stick to something right so. I, yeah I, I think when we go through it and do like another sweep we want to make sure that any of those terms we we, we do refer to are accurate and, and then perhaps add that as the, as the glossary to the end to make sure that we're keeping ourselves hold ourselves to account yeah okay so moving down below the uh, general guidance um as mr martin and i clash on updates <laughs> and and ours um secondary uh those R's, are they? What happened there? I don't think that was me. That was an anonymous elephant. <laughs> um, that might have so been maybe, me. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. There we go. Uh, da, da, da. All right. So this methodology for securing a software supply chain. Uh, a comment here. Should these two be merged in terms of paper organization into a testing and verifying? Um, testing the trustworthy of artifacts and verifying. Alex, do you want to? Yeah, so I just from the perspective of how we're laying out the paper, do we want those to be treated in two separate sections where we have a section on? Um, you know, on the attestation and then a separate section on verification, or do we want to kind of merge those together under the same heading is what I'm asking there. Um, and, you know, um, at the sort of like heading one level, I guess, um, in terms of our, our major sections. So I guess I, I sort of, th if, I'm, if I'm reading that right, I, I, use, I, I split them out in that, um, the, sort of map it to technologies and such. The attestation is is the signing, the in toto, et cetera, et cetera. And then the validation would be at the end of that pipeline, potentially you just sign it at, 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 at just slightly or a actual runtime when you validate the, the artifact and the metadata afterwards. That's how I'd sort of see it, but. So I was seeing it separately, but open suggestions. Anyone else? Separate? Yeah, I would, I would agree that they're separate. Um, yeah. Subtly separate, but separate. <laughs> Can I make one comment about this, this block of text right here? Um, we're essentially <laughs> reiterating the heading titles that are on the left, if you have the, the Google Docs windows. I know we have an anti-checklist block uh, amongst us, uh, but I, I think that maybe it would be pretty straightforward to take the heading titles and then the definition because reading through that that comma uh, the list of of the sections here i'm like reading definitions and i'm just sitting here going like it looks like a really long run on um right i'll be honest so if we break it up into that here are this the header the the section titles that you can see when you when you go to the abstract or whatever the table of contents is going to look like for this and this is what they mean which is i think what somebody did here they extrapolated out they, they, they mapped from the heading title to a definition of that, or at least a, an explanation. It might just be cleaner. And I can do that recommendation. I can do that real quick. Um, and I'll, I'll put the recommendation there. I won't even, cool. I, I even say anything. Uh. Sounds good. All right, so we're down to securing source uh, code, yep. Not much to change down here at the minute. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so um, on the um, Slack channel, there were two points that I still have to edit. Uh, I mean, there was a consensus reached. I think we all discussed our points. Uh, so those two aspects I do have to change. Um, I couldn't change it last week. I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, it's just, I got busy in something else, but I'll, I'll make those changes, right? Those two aspects. One was related to define a list of allowed files, right? This recommendation. So we need to kind of um, 
I mean, we we have different opinion here on the group. So uh, so uh, right now, my point of view is we keep this thing and we'll just try to make it more smoother or softer, right? Uh, so I I have to think about the con content what to put here, right? Um, but yeah, the, these. Uh, uh, one thing that I do like here is that we have a lot of recommendations and, and this is something that I do want to keep explicitly. I do not want to write paragraphs. We, I just want, if somebody wants to secure source code, they, they go into this page and they say, okay, these are the recommendations and they are out of it, right? And similar should be the pattern for other sections. If we are doing image hardening, somebody goes to that section, reads the recommendation and then go out, right? because the paper will be long. No, I don't think so. People are going to read a lot. So, yeah. I, I almost think and it'd be interested to see how other people do it, but, but, you know, we've got multiple different um, recommendations, you know, almost if we have like a, we're, we're loading up on summary sections, but maybe like literally the summary section that lists all the actual recommendations or a checklist. I think the OWASP um, SBCS, standard is written in that sort of way so it's easy to pick up and just get a general idea of what people are looking at doing yeah that, that's a, a great idea as well that okay at the top of the section when we are starting like securing source code after giving the description we can just list all the recommendations in bullet points and then for details people can go into different sections but i, I guess i was thinking at the back of the paper but I've also got a, you can also run it as a series of blogs and other stuff too, because those are largely going to be out there. So it doesn't have to go on the paper. You can say, here's the consolidation of it and then reference the, from the blog to the paper or something like that too. Right. Yeah. Because to me, I mean, one of, one of the goals of the paper is to provide those recommendations. It's, it's not just a, a text that you, you read necessarily, but it is, or the way I was thinking it was, this is a punchy list of rec real recommendations, actionable things you can do to um, to secure your uh, supply chain. Yeah. Um, there was some talk, I think, of doing something like that, of creating just sort of a, um, you know, not to use the word checklist, but something that resembled a checklist in the um, in the executive summary, and or I guess it could also be an appendix. Um, there was some talk of that on Slack. Uh, just to throw that out. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in favor of that blog thing, right? Eventually when the paper comes out or even before that, we can write a blog on each of the big sections and we can then really have a very short blog and in which we iterate the context. These are our recommendations for more detail, go to the white paper, best practices and yeah. stuff like that. But but yeah, I, I'm, I'm not attached to anything. Whatever the group decides, we do it. But but yeah, uh, we have recommendations here and they should, I think, go on, go out in this format, right? Yeah. Also looking down, um, you know, correct this spelling there, hopefully to assets, not, uh, not asses. Um, uh, da, da, da. I appreciate we're sort of running out of time. Uh, we can get to defining roles. Ah, this is actually the roles that we specified at the back of the paper now, right? The suggestion is this section would be to use code owners style features, particularly good. Yeah, I mean, if you are defining uh, personas in, in some other section of the paper, then uh, I can reference that section to make this section more readable, right? That, okay, we have defined personas in XYZ section and based on that within the software, uh, securing software context, only these personas are applicable and you should define then roles according to these personas. And then I have said that, okay, well, they, they will enforce the fine grade permissions and they will enforce the four eyes principle, which, which generally means two person approving something before anything goes into uh, any kind of um, uh, build pipeline, uh, sorry, a release pipeline or a deployment pipeline. So, 
So if you have that persona section already built, just let me know. I'll try to hook into that section and make sense here. Somehow. I think that's part of it. We're trying to add at the bottom, I think, for Zell. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, I appreciate we're sort of at the end of uh, our, uh, our time there. Um, I think we've got through a fair chunk, to be fair. It's only about a third of the paper, but I know that we're multiple people are going to go through it over the next couple of days, uh, I'm going to have another go tonight. Um, I, I certainly think the front part of it's now uh, a lot cleaner. Um, more to do. I wonder if um, how many how many people are going to are, are interested in having a go through editing? Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay, I think that's yep, a, a, a five. Um, Six. Six. Everyone's going to have a go at editing. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Just, yeah, just a small comment. So, so I'm also start going to review the paper. There are a couple of comments in the bottom of the section where technically some things we are referring to, they are not, they are not correct. Like somebody referred like long lived certificates. This is, this is not a thing of today. Today, people are moving towards short-lived uh, certificates. There is crypto policies around it, right? So we cannot recommend long-lived certificates. Okay, that that cannot that shouldn't happen. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So so I will point those things out in the paper because there were a couple of technical aspects which which we should completely avoid, right? That's not the way how things are. So. Yeah, I, mean, I think in any of any of those sort of commentaries or, or, or things we need to discuss, I, I think I think as a group, maybe if we use the Slack channel a, a lot more over the next week or so, um, any of the issues that you know are a little bit sticky, and it's probably one for comment and and feedback, maybe raise that in the Slack, um, and um, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to go top to bottom and then do all of the. Uh, all the appropriate edits and uh, I'll, I'll post something in the chat that, yep, I've had a go and over to someone else sort of thing. Any other bits of logistics we need to cover? Cause I, I think a couple of people are gonna be going through it um, for the next couple of days. No, nope. all right, other than- hey, John, just real quick, would it be helpful to take summary by, or section by section and summarize what you, you as the reader thinks it's saying? That might be, it, I, I think I'm going to do that just for my own personal like understanding and see whether or not there's concise recommendations. That's, that's a good idea. I personally, I'm going to print it all out and read it like a book because uh, I'm just going a bit blinded by uh, looking at the screen. Yeah. Google docs doesn't help really in that regard. So, um, okay, cool. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, look, massively appreciate everyone's um, everyone's effort and, and a huge amount of work that's been put into this paper so far. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, I think it's going to be a really good, useful end product uh, for the group. So thanks very much for your time and, uh, and joining. And uh, look forward to seeing you on Slack for the next couple of days. All right. Thank thanks you. very much, everyone. Thanks. Cheers. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend, Bye. everybody.